Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our transit museum and another use of the venue for talking about some improvements in terms of modernizing the MTA. Before I get started, I'd like to welcome some elected officials and other dignitaries. Uh, Borough President Eric Adams. <laughs> Assembly Member Joanne Simon. <laughs> Council Member Steve Levin. <laughs> the MTA Vice Chair Fernando, Fernando Ferrer. and MTA board member Norman Brown. <laughs> Governor Cuomo has challenged us to lead the MTA into the 21st century, and he's done so in a way to, uh, by supporting us with the largest investment in our history, $27 billion, with the state's commitment of some $8.3 billion, the highest ever. This plan invests in the entirety of the MTA system. You've heard us talk about it before in terms of renew, state of good repair, enhance, improve the level and quality of service, and expand, provide additional capacity. Nothing more important than rolling stock, the actual vehicles that carry our customers to wherever they're going, at subway cars, commuter rail cars, buses, paratransit vehicles. The actual cars ride on track, which is very important, the infrastructure that's seen to the public that makes sure the system runs every day. So things like tracks, station facilities, elevators and escalators. And the paratransit network, the largest in the country that provides a very needed and vital service for those who are mobility limited on the system. And the invisible infrastructure, the things I like to talk about, power, signals, communications, things that are important for the daily running of the system. The one trillion dollar asset, which is the MTA. The governor has also directed us to take a look at examples of other systems in the world, especially ones that are established like London and Tokyo, where they've changed and moved the bar up in terms of what they've done in terms of meeting higher levels of design. The majority of the system was designed at the turn of the 19th to the 20th century and it's held up very well, but we need to move into the 21st century and he keeps reminding me we're in 2016, so we need to pick up the pace. We have been making rapid progress since January. We've announced the addition of some 2,000 state-of-the-art buses that will come to New York City Transit over the next five years. We've fast-tracked the rollout of eTix, an ability for you to use new means of purchasing your fair media, much like you do in other parts of your life, and dramatically increased the progress for a new fair payment system. So if you remember the transition, which was painful from tokens to Metro cards, but we need to make that transition from Metro cards to new fair payment systems, once again, like you do in your everyday walks of life. But today we're talking about unveiling two of the most visible transformations, subway cars and stations. There is no place that has a greater impact on the some 8 million people who use the system or 6 million people who ride the subway than our train cars, our subway cars, and our stations. People come to a station and they wait for a train, they board a car and they ride in that car, and they leave through a station. And on those days when we have delays and they have to spend longer time in the subway station, we need to step it up in terms of the enhanced level of performance we have there. So Ronnie Hakem, the president of New York City Transit now, is gonna walk through what some of those improvements are, which I think are very exciting, and you will too. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Chairman. So the first thing we're going to talk about is our new subway car order. We're going to be issuing an RFP to build state-of-the-art subway cars for our network. This is truly an exciting um, car order. The exterior of the car uh, looks different, but there are some features here that we need to discuss as well. Wider doors, digital bullets to be able to clearly see what subway line and car is coming, LED headlights. This wider door feature is one worth mentioning, though, because one of the things that this pr provides is the opportunity for people to move in and out of the cars much more um, freely, and that will increase our ability to reduce dwell time, which is an issue that we have on crowded platforms. Now, here's the aha moment of the interior of the car. 
this is an open car end design that allows for people to freely tra traverse the length of the subway car. Again, an important feature to provide additional capacity and be able to get people in and out of the cars in a more even-handed way. There will be some additional features, including the digital route display and the use of digital signage in the cars. The cars will be Wi-Fi enabled, USB charging ports, and the grab bar will provide additional uh, ability for people to hold on and have a more and um, more efficient use of the, the grab bar. The new subway cars will also include flip seats. Why? To maximize the space in the car plus illuminated door opening alerts. What will this do? It will be a green indicator light around the door together with an indication of which side of the car the door will be opening on. Again, to facilitate people getting on and off the cars. I've mentioned digital advertising and cars will also be equipped with security cameras. Now let's talk about our stations. 31 subway stations of the future. We're going to be issuing an RFP to start this process off with a design-build contract package. This will allow us to start overhauling and reimagining our stations. 31 stations to be reimagined in every borough in the city of New York. We have four goals for these stations. The first is obviously to address our passenger experience and deliver a modernized passenger experience. The second is easier wayfinding so that our customers can make their way into the stations, know where they're going, get the information that they need. And of course, always prioritizing safety, goal one, reliability and efficiency and to maintain our consistency within these stations. That's important so that our customers will know where to go for information. There will be a consistent application of um, information in these stations. But of course, we are recognizing and respecting the history of our subway stations and will preserve the historic features of the stations while modernizing them. We have an aggressive timeline. The governor challenged us to figure out a way to do this as quickly as possible. So we are keeping the mantra of get in, get done, get out. That means that there will be temporary closures of stations. We think that in negotiating with the contractors, we're gonna challenge them to work even faster, more aggressively, so that we can minimize inconveniences to our customers. Here are some of the key design elements canopies, information, technology, wayfinding, better finishes, lighting, brighter. The use of glass will be very important in these stations. Decluttering the station environment and using art as well, which it provides not only an improved aesthetic, but also wayfinding for our customers. Let's talk about a few of these key design elements. So the first is the entrance. This is an, uh, uh, an imagined entrance at 23rd Street or out at 53rd Street. What are the features here? Increased visibility so that people from blocks can see where is the subway entrance. We will provide neighborhood maps. We will also, and this is a very key feature we think for our customers, provide street level service announcements so that customers will know before they enter the station what the ser service level is for a particular line. This is the new interior, reimagined, very different than what you see today. Another view using the glass in the fare control area, better lighting, new ceiling features. Today, you see the, the iron bars on the, on the side. That's the existing look. Clearly, the use of glass will be an important aesthetic as well as transparency and better wayfinding for the customers. Brighter lighting, countdown clocks, improved signage. These are things that our customers want, and we want to provide them for them. Here's a look at a platform. Here's one of our customers on a leaning bench next to new technology and, and better wayfinding. There will be countdown clocks on the platforms, brighter lighting, USB charging ports, and better finishes, and finishes also that will be easier to maintain. Above ground at our elevated stations, we will also be reimagining what some of those looks will be. Brighter lighting, use of glass and mesh windscreens, contemporary art, things that will inure to the benefit of our customers. 
So we are modernizing the MTA. These are exciting times to be part of it. And um, now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Governor Andrew Cuomo. Governor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. First Chairman Prendergast and uh, Ronnie Hakem, congratulations on a great presentation. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to my colleagues, uh, I thank them for joining us. We have Borough President Eric Adams, Assembly Member Joanne Simon, Steve Levin from the Council, and uh, two board members, Fernando Ferrer and Norman Brown. Thank you. This, this story, you see the continuing evolution of the MTA and some themes that have been consistent now for the past couple of years. Uh, first, the importance of the MTA and the importance of the MTA's evolution. The MTA is the circulatory system for the metropolitan area. If you want to grow the metropolitan area, if you want to sustain the metropolitan area, the answer cannot be that people get in their cars and commute to work. That just doesn't work. Uh, coming in this morning, an hour and a half delay at the Lincoln Tunnel, an hour at the George Washington Bridge. I mean, the volume just cannot be handled by the current road transportation system. The MTA is going to have to increase their capacity to uh, manage that higher volume. Now, the MTA system itself was designed at a much, much different time uh, for a fraction of the number of people, literally a fraction. And the basic system is all the same. The subway tubes are basically the same. You know, the basic capacity is the same. So the challenge for the MTA is how do we increase that capacity with fundamentally the same design and then how do we do it quickly? Now, first, it requires money. And that's why I'm very proud that uh, we have appropriated $27 billion. How much is $27 billion? It's a lot of money. That we can uh, agree to. Uh, but it's hard to put these terms in context relatively. It is the largest amount of money ever invested in the MTA capital plan, period. Period. So the money is there. The funding is there. The challenge is then twofold. The design element and then the implementation element. On the design element, uh, the new cars are very exciting to me. Crowding is a problem, as we all know, because the, the number of riders is way up. Uh, again, on basically the same system. But crowding, you hear about it all the time. My daughters were home for the uh, weekend. They came up to Westchester, and I got the lecture about the MTA. I keep telling them, call Tom. Call Tom. Leave Dad alone. Uh, but what they keep bringing up is uh, the crowding. Uh, and it's been a real problem for the MTA for obvious reasons. It's good news, but it's also bad news wider doors and the open cars, the MTA estimates, estimates that it'll reduce the loading time by a third. The open cars means that you can walk from one car to the other, much like an articulated bus now. You can just walk from one side to the other. So people can have much more movement among the cars themselves, uh, and they can help uh, equalize the load. Uh, right across all the redesigns for the MTA, you see the two new uh, elements, which are always aspects of innovation. First, on security, because this is a different world. It is a different world uh, almost every day. There's another crisis. There's another situation that takes your breath away. And the MTA system has to design that uh, in their plans for the future. So security cameras on cars, yes. Security cameras in stations, yes. Uh, and not just, by the way, uh, underground and in the subway cars. 
when we're redesigning the Penn Stations, the LaGuardia airports of the future, the Tappan Zee bridges of the future, this all is going to have a security element that we couldn't even imagine before. We'll, re we'll, we'll soon be announcing the redo of tunnels and bridges. Security is now a daily concern, and that's going to have to be designed uh, into the new structures. Technology, use of technology. People want to work. They want their device to work 24 hours a day. They don't want to have to look up. You get on the bus. Uh, they want to go right to work. You get off the bus. You walk into the subway station. There has to be Wi-Fi. There have to be charging ports. That is the way. And this new system will have all of that. So uh, I'm excited about the design. I'm excited about the innovation. Um, the challenge now is to get it done. Uh, and that's a phenomenal challenge for the MTA, as it is for every government agency. The world moves much faster now. It develops faster. Private sector moves faster. Innovation moves faster. A device that comes out today is obsolete in three months. Government, the challenge for government today is to move as fast as society is moving and move as fast as government dicta as society dictates. The old rhythm of government, well, we have to talk about it, we have to think it's going to take six months, and then we're going to have a meeting, and then we're going to have another meeting, and then we're going to go through a process, and we're going to... That doesn't work anymore. It just does not work. You cannot keep pace with the times. These projects have to happen, and they have to happen now. And it's not just the MTA. It's every state agency. It's every federal agency. It's every city agency. And you have to find a different way to do business, because the old machine can't do it. So 31 stations are going to be bid and built in a way we've never done before, which is what? Design build. What is design build? Government gets out of the business. The old business, government designed and then government constructed. Or government designed and then government bid out the construction to a developer. That system never worked well and it was never fast. We've had enough experience to know the best way to do this now is contract the entire project to a private sector developer who does this, who can design the project to your specifications, can build the project, and is incentivized to get it done quickly, and is penalized if they're late. So these endless construction projects that just go on and on and on, uh, and they seemingly have no end, that has to stop. And we need a different way to do business, which is design build. We've done it on the Tappan Zee Bridge between Westchester and Rockland. They estimated the bridge would take 10, 15 years to build. It's going to take about four years to build. Design build. We put out the plan. We had an international competition. We have a, the fastest bridge building company on the globe won. And the bridge is coming out of the water. Government could never have done that if they were doing the design and the construction. Why? Because we don't build bridges. It's not what we do. There are companies that build bridges. In the private sector, they'll tell you all, all the time, that's not what I do. Stay to your proficiency. Stay to your core proficiency. And let somebody else do what they do. So for the MTA, Congratulations to Ms. Hakem. 31 stations are going to be put together in packages, sent out to the private sector, ask the developers who has the best price, who can get it done the fastest, and who will accept our terms of penalties if you're actually delayed. Also, rather than 
keeping the station in semi-operation for a long period of time. There will be per a period of closure where we will close the station. People will be inconvenienced for a short period of time and need to access another station, but we'll actually get the construction done. Rather than prolonged delays, there'll be a period of closure and then the station will reopen and the station will be done. Uh, so I'm very excited about the new methodology because the money is there, the ideas are there, uh, the design is there, the new technology is there, the new security protocols are there, now we have to get it done. And we have to get it done faster than we've ever gotten it done before. Uh, and again, that's not just the MTA, that's all across the board, except the borough of Brooklyn, which is already beating everybody in, by light years. <laughs> congratulations to Chairman Prendergast, con congratulations to uh, Ronnie Hakem. Uh, it's exciting, it's a massive challenge uh, running the MTA. I thank the board members, I thank the chairman, I thank the president. Uh, and it's a massive challenge to build a new MTA while you are operating the old MTA. And that is exactly where we are. So thank you all very much. Let me ask the chairman and Ronnie Hakem to come join me for any questions. Any difficult questions for Tom or Ronnie? Any softballs for me? There's a mention about uh, reducing dwell times of the trains by a third. Can you put some numbers and some actual train lines to what you say? Like, how much average, how do you count it, how over how many train lines, and what is the reduction of a third? I'll, I'll take that. The basic rule of thumb on the system for years, and it's a rule of thumb, it doesn't apply to every line and every station, but we designed the wayside block signal system for 90 second headways, but that also includes a 30 second dwell time at stations. Now there are some stations that have far in excess of 30 seconds, some that have less than 30 seconds, but when we apply that standard, what we're talking about, especially at the most heavily uh, utilized stations, the ability for people to board and alight faster. It would be nice if people always waited till everybody got off the train before they started to board, but that's a little difficult in New York. So the wider the door, the better the behavior generally in terms of people boarding and alighting. So that's the general idea in terms of trying to reduce the dwell time. And on lines like the Lexington Avenue line, that's the most pronounced problem that we have. Tom, you have previously said when asked about the Lexington line that the only two ways to help, Second Avenue subway that'll take off some of the volume, and computerizing the signals or modernizing the signals. Is the wider doors and the sort of through space on the trains, is that a third way that you have it, factored in? Yes, it is a third way. I mean, ideally, we are, that is the most crowded line in the country, 500,000 people a day. So by offloading the Upper East Side loads onto 2nd Avenue subway and freeing up capacity will help. Communication-based train control shrinks that headway even from 90 seconds down to something lower. And then the third issue is dwell time at stations. And so what you say, dwell time at stations and also the open car end design. Because as, as you know, people are afraid to get to the ends of the car when they have fear that they'll be able to make the car door and get out. So when, when other systems have used these open end car end designs, they've had more evenly distributed loads throughout the train, hence additional people on the train. Uh, the state color is not yellow and blue, by the way. Gold, I'm sorry, gold. A gold and blue. <laughs> there is no gold and blue here. Uh, but no, I think it is fair to say you're seeing a redesign of the MTA uh, on every level. And when you're building new cars and you're building new buses and you're building new stations, et cetera, uh, color schemes are part of that and the attractiveness is part of that. And the fact that it is the state of 
billion dollars, right, state investment. Is there something to the, the fact that they look like the state colors? Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm sure Chairman Prendergast, when he's done, is going to put on every door, on every train, thank you, New York State, for the $27 billion that made this possible. <laughs> As long as the train is on time. If the train is not on time, then. <laughs> Governor, you've been holding a lot of MTA press conferences recently. More, I would gather, than in recent years. Why the new emphasis on the MTA? Because there is a new emphasis on the MTA. Because when you look at the challenges uh, that are before us right now, uh, one of the really pressing challenges that has uh, increased in intensity over the near uh, past has been the uh, recreation of the MTA. It is the recreation of the MTA. This is a, I think, one of the greatest challenges we have. We've been focusing on transportation writ large, right? New LaGuardia Airport. Why? Because it's a sin that that airport was allowed to continue as long as it did. Penn Farley. Why? Because having Penn Station as one of the most heavily traveled destinations in the hemisphere and subjecting people to the uh, ugliness of that facility as the entry point to New York is ludicrous. Uh, and then in terms of the future and growing the region and the comfortability of the region, you have to recreate the MTA. Now, the first step was the funding. You can have great ideas and you can have a great implementation capacity, but you needed the funding. We worked very, very hard over the past couple of years to get the funding. And by the way, we needed to get the state in the fiscal condition to have the funding. So step one is identify the funding. We did that with $27 billion. We went to New York City. We had additional funding. Uh, and then it's ideas and implementation. And these all connect. The buses connect to the subways. The subways connect to the airport. The airport connects to the bridges. And that synchronicity among the system is what we're working on. All right, last one. Yes? Looking forward, obviously, is very vital, but what about the state of some of the subways today? For example, I was on the F, and none of the escalators worked. So as we're seeing the modernization coming, there are some stations that are just falling apart. Are we taking Tom, them in? either one? Go ahead. Which station were you at? <laughs> <laughs> so I the got home on Lexington and 63rd, and then height. Three yep. Stairs. So, at 32, that's easy. At 62, that's probably hard. State of good repair is key. An important part of New York City Transit's share of the big capital program is $15.8 billion. That um, is well, a huge investment that we're making. Um, and we recognize that we have to make things better in our existing stations. And so this is the start of that. You know, just follow up, uh, if I can. The, I said earlier that the great challenge, when they write the history book about uh, the MTA at this period and Chairman Prendergast's leadership, the great challenge is operating a system while you are rebuilding it. The way the MTA has done it in the past is they've operated it and they've patched it. This is not a patched job. Patch jobs are a waste of money, in my opinion. This is a rebuilding reconstruction. Now, if you look at the $27 billion capital plan, you'll see, as Ms. Hakem said, uh, a great bulk of that money is for good repair, which means maintenance to keep it running now, fix the escalator, et cetera. Uh, at the same time, the escalator has to be replaced. I don't know if this one does in particular, but the, the metaphor is you need new escalators and you need a new way of uh, accessing that, that station. So rather than patching and patching and patching in these little construction jobs wherever you go, close the station for a period of time, rebuild it. Do it all at once, do it right, strip it down and build a whole new station. That's what this approach is talking about. But you have a duality of function, operate the system, keep the escalator running, 
keep the trains on time, and rebuild it fundamentally with new design, new innovation, and a different implementation mechanism than you've ever done before, which is what this design build and this package of 31 is introducing. That is the great challenge of the MTA at this time. Uh, and that's why on the question of uh, why so much attention, why so much effort, this is, I believe, one of the most significant accomplishments the state will make uh, over this period of time is building a new transportation system for the metropolitan area. When you look at the MTA work, LaGuardia, train to LaGuardia, redesign of JFK, Penn Farley, Tappan Z. We will announce plans for the Midtown Tunnel, Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, Verrazano Bridge. Uh, you'll see this is a massive recreation of the infrastructure as we know it. And uh, it is so massive, I've made it a personal priority of mine. Tom loves to talk to me several times a day. I can tell in the tone of his voice when he answers the phone. He's got that cheery, bubbly. And uh, the way you get it done is uh, every day you push that stone up the hill. And uh, bringing change to this massive a system is not easy. But we're doing it. And uh, constant attention helps. All right. Thanks a lot. Everybody. How confident are you that the second Avenue subway will open? I'll tell you in November. <laughs> the, uh, uh, do you know the December uh, estimate, yes. 2nd Avenue subway? We're still on track. We're pushing very aggressively with all the contractors to get the work done. We're entering the testing and commissioning phase, so we're still committed to the December 31st date. All right, and I have a shovel in the trunk. If they get slow, I can help. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.